Hey, Karstalis, welcome back. Um, this particular episode session, I'm just going to quickly show you how I break up a model, a model, a ZBrush model that is, into separate parts and then export it out to, say, VRED. Um, exporting it out to other programs are fairly similar. We'll go over those in a different episode. But first, I'll just show you particularly, specifically, how to export it out to VRED. Um, now, I've got a model here, and um, I started with this, this model here. This is a really dirty proportional study here. And then I retopologized on top of that and came out with this, this baby here. So it's, it's fairly smooth right now. Um, a little back and forth between the topology, bringing it back into ZBrush, and then and then um, making changes such as these undercuts here, and so forth. But um, that's not the point. The point is we're going to show you how to cut it up. You can go about this in two ways. Uh, you can slice it up using the slice curve brush, and that is this thing here. Um, slice curve and slice curves let me change it to showing your poly groups and your polys by pressing shift F and you see all of my uh, polygons and vertices and edges and so forth right here and you can see it's very dense I can cut this up by simply using this um, slice curve brush and just slicing it up like that as you can see there's a different color delineating uh, the various poly group. So if I now shift click that, it's going to separate into a different group. Now when I export that, uh, that'll retain that separation and then I can apply shaders to each one of those different uh, poly groups. It's, it's really essentially just like that uh, and all the other methods. There's another way that I find that can be not as accurate but may give you better results in terms of how you lay out the graphics on the model. And that is using the masking tool. And uh, you use a masking tool like you use in any other way, but instead of using it to push and pull the model, you tell ZBrush by pressing Control w that you'd like that to be a separate polygroup. Let me illustrate. I'm going to go ahead and make these headlamps here. I'm going to press down on my Control and just start to draw maybe portions for this headlamp. The nice thing about that is I can see exactly I'm pressing control alt by the way to delete the mask and adjust it. I can see how that lays on the surface and I can keep on playing around with that particular poly group or that mask to get it just the way I'd like it. Let's say in that group I would want a little bit more angularity so I'm just going to bring that down like that, see how it looks on the top. So we've got a little bit of snap there. And I'm going to back that up like that, bring that down there. And let's call that good. So all I need to do now is press Control w Let me make that mask a little darker. Press Control w and that what that does, if I press Shift-F, that changes that into a polygroup, as you can see here. It's a separate polygroup. Change a different color here. And now, that would be, when I use a shader in VRED, a separate color if I chose it to be that way. But I'll call, of course, this is sort of jagged, and that's not acceptable. So what I want to do is to crease this edge here and I'm going to do that by going to the crease menu or the poly group menu and pressing crease but uh, no that's the geometry menu I'm sorry geometry and then you go to the crease and then you say crease here now I've got it down here you can see down here in my uh, sub menu here my sub palette so it makes it accessible for me so I'm just going to press crease and that's going to crease that edge as you can see if you move closely, there's a crease around that edge. What that allows me to do is go to my brush menu, not my two menu here, and I'm going to pick the toot brush, 
and I'm going to pick smooth and smooth crease. What that's going to allow me to do is now when I press my shift button, shift key, I can smooth that poly group. As you can see, I can smooth the edges of that poly group. And it does uh, relatively little damage to the surface, the underlying surface, because it's sliding uh, the poly group um, to make it smooth. Now, of course, if things get a little bit too round, I can always use my slide, slide brush and slide them back into uh, position. So I'm going to go ahead and use my slide brush here and just slide this, make this a little bit square here because that's how I like it. Slide that into position here. That looks okay there. Maybe slide that here. And so now I've got a cleaner, a cleaner um, poly group. So when I export that out, we'll have that clean uh, surface or clean uh, poly group for V-Red. I'm going to do uh, something really quick for the the tail lamp here too. Uh, let's do a quick mask here. For this, I am going to use this lasso to make it go a little quicker. Although the la when using the lasso, lasso, you're going it's going to project all the way through the model, which sometimes I don't like cleaning that up. But you can always you can go always go back with the uh, the regular mask to and clean it up. So I'm just gonna do something like that. Maybe come down like that. Let's do something like this. There, like that. And so we've got a poly group there. We'll call that a tail lamp. I'm not sure if I like the tail lamp. We've got a, a negative in my roof here that I just noticed. But I'm going to control W that. So now I've got another poly group for that, as you can see. Go back and do a crease again. And you can see there's a crease around there. And let's clean that up by using my smooth crease again. And smoothing that edge out. And we can, again, adjust it by using the slide and so forth, right? I'm not going to worry too much about the underside because this is just an example. Let's slide it a little bit to get uh, the line just the way we'd like it. So now we've got a poly group for that. We've got a poly group for that. And one more. Let's do one more. And we've got poly groups for the roof. We've got a poly group for the tail lamp, the headlamps. And so we're good. Now the next thing I do in preparation for V-RED is to take all of these poly groups and separate them. Now it's kind of crazy, but that's what I like to do. I, I like to take them and split by group. I'm going to go ahead down here to this is my sub two palette palette split and group split. So that separates all of those various poly groups into uh, separate sub twos, separate layers, right? So if I were to turn on solo, you can see that if I click every one of these things, the separate subgroup would come up. See? Like so. <clears throat> the body here. Turn it off a of solo. Now all of these things are on and what I want to do now in preparation for V-RED is to now group visible. Now, it was already grouped into one sub two. Now I'm going to group it back into one sub two. Merge visible. All the poly groups are still there. But when I go now to export it, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go and take this sub two and go to my export. Let's go to here. And we'll say for VRED 2. 
and like so. Uh, but so we've got that there and so now we've exported it. I'm gonna fire up VRED. So now all I have to do is go to my open for VRED2. Um, that's an OBJ file that I saved it as. Open it up and what I want to do because I'm not sure the size of that thing that's just a sketch model so I'm gonna go to the scene here I'm gonna say center on origin I'm gonna put on the ground and I'm gonna adjust the size and I'm gonna take the slider and slide it all the way to where it says under the icon of car I wanna make sure that my Z up down here is on Y up because uh, by default ZBrush is on Y up so we're going to make sure we bring it oriented correctly. And so now all I have to do is say OK. And there goes that model. Now I like to test and see if my, uh, let's turn on ray tracing up here so we can see a shadow or so. You can see the shadow. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with VRED, you know that you don't have a clutch key to tumble and zoom. It's all just in your mouse, left, middle, and right mouse button uh, will allow you to manipulate the model in perspective, zoom, pan, etc. So I've got this up and I'm going to bring up my materials and just a quick test to see if my materials are correctly separated. Go here, I'm going to right click, create material, chrome, and I've got a chrome and all I have to do now is just drag it across and as you can see they're correctly delineated, uh, separated out. So I can just now create my materials, uh, unicolor maybe, let's do a unicolor, make this kind of dark, let's do unicolor. Uh, so here it goes, here is the model completely shaded up. Um, the glass, we've got the glass shaded up, we've got a tail lamp, we've got some geometry inside of the lens that I lit up and also uh, I went ahead and changed the uh, top glass, I made it a matte uh, black sort of. It's all shaded up, here it is guys, this is a good base for a photo retouch, um, good base to do some redesigning, go from here and go back into ZBrush or where, wherever uh, other program you want to go into. So um, this is how you get a model from ZBrush to VRED. Okay guys, until next time.